95% of our lives are run and created by our subconscious mind programming. Imagine if your subconscious mind is running many negative, disempowering, and self-sabotaging programs. How will that 95% of your life turn out to be? Would you like help to change your subconscious programming into something that works for you and set it to attract and create everything you desire? Join Tamara Oviat in her show Metaprogramming and the Human Biocomputer here on Ohm Times, where she will connect to the source energy and change your subconscious programming by deleting your negative belief systems. Tamara is the founder of Sacred Activations, a subconscious metaprogramming modality that rewires your brain and shifts hundreds of your belief systems so you can break away from lack, pain, and suffering and take control of what you want to create in your life. Tamara has helped hundreds of thousands of people worldwide, and she is here to help you too. It's not about fighting what you don't want. It's about creating what you do want. And the only way to do that is to change and upgrade your subconscious programming. Let Tamara help you create magic in your world. Tune in every week at Metaprogramming and the Human Biocomputer. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to a new episode of Metaprogramming in the Human Biocomputer. I have a very, very special guest today, Dr. David. I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name because if you guys have been listening to me at all, you know I always butcher him and then I get embarrassed. So I'm not even going to try. But Dr. David, a couple things about him. He is a sacred activations practitioner. He helps people so much and he analyzes blood he 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 will talk to you about your blood results if you're confused and you need help um he he will work by skype with you he's absolutely incredible when i was going through the coronavirus i was lighting up his phone <laughs> because i just i couldn't even think and i was in a lot of fear and he really helped me through it when my son went through coronavirus, he called in a, a prescription for him um, in California for him. So it was it was absolutely such a blessing. And I'm so thankful to have him here on the show. Last time I had him on the show, the show was deleted and I got a strike within 12 hours on YouTube. Um, so we're going to keep it mellow today. <laughs> so we don't get any strikes or, or get kicked off. But He's really a godsend. If you need any help, um, definitely talk to Dr. David. Hi, David. Thank you so much for being on today. I really appreciate it. Hi. Appreciate being here. Thank you. You're welcome. So what do you do? We were talking the other day before you came on, and we were going to talk <clears throat> about blood tests and blood analysis. What is it that you really do to help people? Okay. Well, um, my, I haven't. 100% completely alternative medical practice or integrative complementary medicine, whichever term you'd like to use. Um, basically, on my website, it lists all the procedures we do. Um, I do pretty much most of all the standard procedures alternative doctors do, and I, and I do a lot of procedures that they don't do. So most of these procedures, of course, are, are physical-based. Um, but I, I, in addition, do a lot of energy work uh, on my patients, too, for those who are open to it. Um, what distinguishes us mostly from most other alternative practices is, is several things. <clears throat> the long list of alternative procedures we have available to us, but also the testing methodology we use. Because of that, we're not just running everybody through a standard protocol of procedures based on their symptoms or diagnoses. Uh, we're actually personalizing the uh, protocol to each individual person based on the blood evaluation I do, which I'll, I'll get into in a minute. I, I act like a regular doctor too at times. Of course, when you first come in, you have an initial history and physical pretty standard. Uh, and I will look at standard blood work and standard scan reports. Uh, what I do does not replace that, it complements that. Um, but the blood evaluation we do is basically a 100% energetic blood evaluation. So uh, if anyone's probably quite a few people on, on this group have had muscle testing or kinesiology done, I, I would imagine. 
so you could you could conceptualize the blood evaluation I do as if I'm taking your blood sample home and I'm doing kinesiology on it for about two hours, let's say. And, and not only do we get the findings that way, but we also get the treatment protocol that way. Uh, because I could have two people with the exact same findings on my blood testing, but their treatment protocols could be very similar or very dissimilar because everyone's an individual and they have their own uh, sensitivities. So we re resonate the blood or check the blood against all the supplements we use and all the treatments we do. And I test your treatments we don't do. And if it's a treatment that shows useful for a person that we don't do, we will refer them uh, to the appropriate uh, people who can do those procedures. Um, that's sort of like an intro. I'm not going to pronounce my name either because half the time I pronounce it wrong too. I think it's my name. <laughs> <laughs> You think it's what? I'm sorry, I was laughing. <laughs> I, I think it's Manganaro, something like that. Manganaro, thank you. Manganaro. <laughs> so the blood analysis, okay, I have a question about this. The blood analysis that you do, so you take a vial of their blood home and work on it. What if somebody lives in a different country or a different state? How do they get their blood to you or how do you test that um, without them being present? Is that possible? Um, yes, it is. Uh, before I test the person's uh, blood, I like to meet them. If I can't meet them in person, uh, we'll have them fill out the typical doctor forms, send them to us, I'll review them, and then we'll have a Zoom call where we'll go over the forms, just like you would do a history uh, in an office. I just can't obviously do the physical. And then we'll have a separate appointment where they'll send the blood sample by overnight mail. So it has to be on appointment because I have to make sure I don't have too many bloods that day and I'm there that day. And, and then they just FedEx or overnight UPS the blood sample to me. Uh, the blood's typically good for about three, four days. So, you know, I, I could test it uh, uh, even if it's mailed. Some mail, you know, sometimes when you mail things, they're irradiated, but typically not these small uh, parcels. So as long as I get it within a few days, I, I can test it. And I, I could get into more depth on how, how I do the blood and what we test for, if you like, and I could do a, a screen share uh, concerning that too. Oh yeah, let's just get into it, if that's okay with you. Okay, all right. Yeah. Um, do you have to make me the host so I could screen share or I, do you think I could just- Oh, co-host, yeah, let me make you a co-host. <laughs> So, so in the meantime, uh, the things we check for just as broad categories. So I check for things that, you know, regular doctors check for that you could check regular blood work with. But typically doctors won't take a person's blood and do a panel of 20, 30 viruses, 30 bacteria, 20 parasites. You know, they typically don't do that unless they have a strong uh, already inkling or indication that that may be an issue. So that's one thing, that's one thing that's different. I also check for things that you can check with regular blood work, but the regular blood work may not be as reliable as we'd like it to be. A good example of that is Lyme disease, where even the CDC uh, uh, says that, uh, you know, it could be missed 40 to 60% of the time uh, with regular blood work. Uh, I'm admitting someone because I'm a co-host. Uh, someone- Oh, can, I'll get them. You'll get them, okay. <laughs> yeah, we did. All right, Dan so, and Carolyn. <laughs> we have two co-hosts here taking care of that stuff. Okay. So so uh so I check for things that they may miss and I check for some esoteric things that you really can't check for regular blood work like stresses to the autonomic nervous system, the more esoteric ones being electromagnetic stress and geopathic stress. I mean they do have some in-person tests for electromagnetic stress that not many doctors know about or do, but I I could just check that with the uh, blood evaluation. Another thing that makes it so different and unique is the things I'm checking for, I only see things that are currently active. It's typically only the active things that are contributing to a person being unwell. I don't see dormant things or old things. So for instance, when a doctor is checking you for some infections, uh, if it's a urine culture where they're culturing the bacteria, that's one thing. But if they're checking your blood for an infection, they're looking for antibodies. If you have antibodies to something, you, they can't always tell if the infection is active or not, or new or old. You know, an antibody to a virus could just be from an old vaccine or an old infection that you've resolved and you still have immunity to. Whereas I only see what's active, which is uh, 
really more pertinent for uh, uh, for what we're doing. So let me see. I'm going to screen share. See if this works. Okay. So. Uh, so this is just basically uh, a brochure I have in the office on uh, the uh, blood evaluation I do. I actually don't have the office brochure, um, but to, to learn more about the practice and all the procedures we do, our, our website is MAM, M-A-M, as in Mary, Apple Mary, NYC as in New York City, dot com. So we call the blood evaluation a bioresonance analysis of health. So I explain to everybody what I mean by that and how we do this energetic testing. So this simple explanation is if you have two tuning forks in a room that have the same key, musical key, if you hit one, even though they don't touch, the other will also vibrate if it's of the same key. Uh, and music uh, key means frequency. So that means they have the same frequency. And the only way they can have the same frequency is if they're identical, same size and shape, made of the same metals and same proportions. So that's a, a physics phenomenon called resonance. Uh, we call it bioresonance because we're using a device that works like the two tuning forks. It tells us if there's a match in frequencies or not between the blood sample or a person if they're holding something uh, and what I'm testing. So if there's a match in those frequencies, uh, if I'm testing a, a vial that has Epstein-Barr virus in it and there's a match in those frequencies, it means that virus is present and active in the person at the time. Uh, so that's what we mean by bioresonance of health. That's how we get all our findings. We have a lot of slides and vials of true physical items. Uh, there are indirect readings, which are not as accurate, but very useful, meaning if I don't have a slide or vial for something, you can use a word, a picture, um, a graph, uh, et cetera, and numbers. Um, any questions on that? Um, no, I don't have any questions on that. Okay. Um, all right. Go ahead. Yeah, my questions are different for people like me out of the country. What if I wanted you to do a blood analysis on me and I couldn't get you my blood? As long as you have, you know, sometimes when you're out of the country, it depends on, on the mail. So as long as I could get it within two days to three days at the most, uh, and okay. then you know, I, I could do the blood. Uh, I do okay. test remotely. I, I don't uh, like to always do that. I feel it's not as accurate. Um, but I always like to to uh, know the person, have met them, have a picture of them. The testing is energetic. So, I mean, I've had people in the office, here's an interesting uh, concept. I've had people in the office that don't fully understand the testing, and that's fine, but but they, you know, they consent to it and they do it. So they've been getting procedures and they're getting a follow of blood and they say to me, oh, do the blood, take my blood before you do today's procedure, because I want to see how the blood is before you do the procedure. And I just say, okay. Meanwhile, <laughs> the blood it has nothing to do when, when you take the blood, believe it or not. It has to do when you test the blood. So if I take their blood before I do the procedure, but I'm testing it after the procedure, uh, I will get the more recent results. Basically, the blood is an energetic interface to their body and their energy fields. So what's happening in them at any given time is what's happening in the blood, whether it's in them or not at the time. And as long as the sample's still fresh enough. Isn't so, that amazing, you guys? Did you just hear what he said? I mean, the, the, blood re, the blood results that's already been taken from your body even a couple of days before will change after you receive a, a process with him that is changing your energy field. See how everything's connected? That's really amazing. That's such an amazing fact. Or, or if something new happens in the interim, you could send your blood and catch a virus two days later. If I check it two days later, I, I may detect it. So it's it's really a way to connect to your energy field. It has your energy field. The blood, uh, one drop of blood on a slide is what we use, not vials. Although if you use a vial, it probably lasts longer, but it has some additives like an anticoagulant. But, uh, but one drop has hundreds of cells. It has all of your DNA. It's traveled everywhere in your body and it picks up energetic impressions from everywhere it's been. So we don't see the skin that well. We don't see deep cavities that well, like inside the uterus or colon, although we still can detect intestinal parasites. Sometimes if we're suspicious of parasites, but I don't see it on the blood and I think it's an intestinal parasite, we will test a stool sample. 
So that's just the, that's a, the brochure. Let me see if I go to the next page. Okay, so this just goes over some of the broad categories of things we test. So besides testing for regular medical things, we have a toxicity scale. We don't name the toxins because there's over 80,000 uh, synthetic chemicals we put in the environment. Pathogens just means infections, and we test the categories virus, uh, bacteria, parasite, uh, and mold or fungus. Uh, stressors to the nervous system and immune system, uh, tissue pH or acid base balance, autonomic nervous system issues, which are very, very interesting. Uh, nutritional deficiencies, I put in quotes. Everybody shows to take some supplements. Uh, I don't really mean it's a deficiency. It means if you take the supplements recommended, your body has an opportunity to, to work more efficiently than it would otherwise. Uh, allergies and gut dysbiosis issues. I'll, I'll show you the worksheet I work with. Um, so this is a blank worksheet. Uh, and so um, some of this stuff is not that important for, for this. We'll go over it quickly. I look for energy imbalance based on the main energy work we do tissue toxicity scale, gut issues, tissue pH. These would be the infections, autonomic nervous system if it's open or closed. So the autonomic nervous system and your immune systems help to uh, maintain and regain your health. So we want this system not very stressed. There's an alternative practice of medicine in Germany, Germany called neural therapy, where they've done a lot of research on the autonomic nervous system. And there's uh, eight or nine categories of things that can stress and strain it, and they're all delineated here. And some of these we have all the time. Like we always have some psychological stress, some deficiencies. We all have some heavy metals all the time. But you want to get this autonomic nervous system in the unstrained or open state. So what it does is the autonomic nervous system has uh, not complete control, uh, but a lot of control over our automatic body functions. So it works without our uh, conscious mind telling it to work. So you don't want to tell your heart to beat you know, every second or whatever. So it works autonomous of our conscious mind, so it's called autonomic. And so it has a big influence in the heart rate, rhythm, the blood pressure, the digestion, the function of the immune system, the function of the glands, uh, nerves, and uh, the hormonal system, et cetera. So when it's open in the less strained state, it's doing that daily work easily, humming along, and it's more available to deal with new problems or to work on non-urgent healing at the time. When it's closed or stressed, it still does the daily work, but it's struggling a bit at it. Uh, it will work on new problems, but have a harder time dealing with them. And if there's any non-urgent deep healing needed, it just puts that on the back burner and ignores it for the time being because it's already you know, overworked and distracted. So I have a question about that. If it's opened or closed. Um, so if it's closed, it closed down because of stress and overwhelm? Well, it could close from any of these categories here. And it's usually a combination of categories. So most of the, the adults I see, the autonomic nervous system is closed. Now, this is alternative terminology. There is a regular medical term for the autonomic nervous system disorders, they call the umbrella term is called dysautonomias, and there's a lot of different subcategories. If anyone has Lyme, they may be familiar with POTS, P-O-T-S, which is an acronym, or orthostatic hypotension. Uh, autonomic nervous system dysfunction could be temperature dysregulation. Um, severe constipation is autonomic, can be autonomic nervous system dysfunction in the gut. So most people have five to seven, most people I see, I, I don't typically see healthy people, sometimes I do, but most have five to seven of these potential stressors. And um, as I said, we all have some heavy metals, psychological stress and deficiencies. Most also have uh, interference field or focus. That's, that's basically any system or area of the body that's uh, stressed, uh, causes more stress to the autonomic nervous system. A lot of my patients have autoimmunity. Uh, some have some food allergies. Um, so, uh, did I answer your question, Tamara? Yes, you did. Thank you. Okay. So, so what we try to do is with the treatment program is work on as many of these as we can. So I'll show you one of these without a patient's name. Uh, this was a real patient of mine. So this is the handwritten result and it's a busy mess, right? <laughs> so, so basically, um, you know, it lists their infections, that viruses, that tick bacteria, that intestinal parasite. They have one focus or focal area that's 
causing a lot of stress to the autonomic nervous system. It's the lymphatic system, they have solvents, heavy metals, autoimmunity to the brain and joints. Uh, I list their food allergies here, their environmental allergies. And down here, I put a lot of other details that I don't list otherwise, um, but I check their glands like the thyroid, the adrenals. Um, I use the zero to 10 scale and five in the middle is normal. So you can see if a gland is over or underactive. And of course, for instance, like the thyroid, you combine that with regular blood work. So I, I check energetically, red, regular blood work will see it um, biochemically, for instance. Um, and so we get a bunch of readings like this, and then I type it into a nice little format like that. And this is what the patient receives. And then in the follow visit, we go over this line by line in you know tedious detail, uh, which you know I won't go through now, obviously. Uh, but basically, um, I have them read this, and we go over it line by line, and they ask questions after each paragraph, uh, and then we go to the treatment program once they're satisfied. So as far as indirect readings, I don't know if you can use, read this on on your screens. I can. Okay, so down here it says the atlas bone is poorly aligned. So that's an indirect reading. So the atlas bone is the first cervical vertebra. Uh, I check the atlas, the sphenoid, and the bite because a lot of my patients have head and neck uh, and pain and headaches. Uh, and so once we see that out of alignment, we then could check for the specific type of treatment to realign it. So there's a lot of different, people just know chiropractor, but there's, uh, we check for esoteric chiropractors like atlas orthogonalis, orthogonalists, however you say it. <laughs> I like esoteric acupuncture. I mean, yeah. sorry, I've done esoteric acupuncture um, energetically, and actually we offer that in medical intuitive, but I love energetic practice. I never even thought of that. Oh, okay. Yes, you can. Yes, you can do that. They do that in the body code, uh, energetic you know, adjustments to the uh, spine. What happens, or, or any bone in the body, and the glands, and the hormones, and the organs, uh, what happens is if you're adjusting someone's spine remotely energetically, it's not like it pops into place immediately, although it can. What generally happens is you're setting up, just like you manifest something, you're setting up the, the proper alignment in the energy field. And then later in the day, if they happen to turn or move, normal movement, daily wow. activity, then it pops into place. It's really uh, interesting. Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's yeah. I, I absolutely love that because because we do it with acupuncture. So why not do it with chiropractic? Right. I used right. to do um, I used to do a lot of, or receive a lot of chiropractic because I had so many emotions and stuff that I was always out of balance. And a good friend of mine is a non-force chiropractor. And um, I love that because she's just checking energetically where you're at and pushing it back in place. I never, ever thought about energetic chiropractic. That's just fantastic. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's fine. I, I sense another master class in the works. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's going into master uh, medical intuitive, man. I can't wait to practice this. <laughs> So this, this is that same patient, the, the back of the sheet, where we list all the nutrients that would be useful and the procedures. And so, you know, we have these uh, pecan remedies, which are detox remedies. They're a combination of homeopathic and herbal remedies to stimulate the detox organs, the main ones being the liver, the lymphatic system, the kidneys, and the colon. Uh, your skin and your lungs detox you too, but they're minor detox areas. They're secondary. Uh, so the kidneys filter the blood, the colon through the bowel movements. The lymphatic system is a big detox system. So the lymph nodes and glands, the lymphatic is a big circulatory system in the body, much like the arteries and veins. In fact, there's more fluid in the lymph system than is in the venous system. And it's not only a big part of our immune system, but it's a big detox system. So those fluids bathe our tissues, and then the toxins drain into the lymphatics and, and somewhat into the veins too. So uh, we stimulate those detox organs with the combination of these homeopathic slash herbal remedies, and then some also supplements like glutathione, uh, uh, for instance. So um, I mentioned the kidneys filter, the colon, the bowel movements, the lymphatic system drains into the um, colon, and then the liver puts toxins in the bile, which drains in the colon, and the liver itself 
uses multiple different chemical pathways, uh, phase one and phase two reactions that go on to detox. So you can stimulate those pathways with certain nutrients to accelerate uh, detox. You see, as the toxins build up in our body, they go everywhere. So they also build up in the detox organs. So the more toxic you're, you get, the harder it is to remove the toxins because the detox organs are just not working as well. It's like an air filter being clogged. This is just another class of homeopathic remedies, the pleomorphics, and these are all the supplements that showed on this person. You know, some are for energy, uh, some are for detox. I, I didn't think you want me necessarily to go into detail on the supplements per se. Well, you know, supplements is something easy for people to get. So supplements yeah. that'll help you detox your body and help your limb system and your body to, to heal and operate better, I think is really important. Okay, well, um, so obviously I can't give individual suggestions here, but most people right. need glutathione. Uh, the liver makes some glutathione. Uh, we don't absorb it well in, in products it may be in. Um, the liver is often deficient in glutathione because it's used to detoxify pesticides, chemicals, a whole bunch of different class of toxins. Um, you need a liposomal form to absorb it orally. Uh, we give it orally and by injection. There are also suppositories. So a liposomal glutathione. Oh, uh, you mentioned supplements. If you go to my website homepage, mamnyc.com, of course, with the three Ws, if you go there and just scroll down on the homepage, there's a, they call it a button, I guess. It's called Fullscript, F-U-L-L-S-C-R-I-P-T, Fullscript. Uh, if you set up an account there, uh, Fullscript doesn't make any supplements, but they warehouse supplements from 200 or more professional companies. Many of these companies only sell their physicians or other healthcare practitioners in health food stores. Um, so they warehouse them. So instead of getting an account, the doctor, instead of getting an account with 200 different companies, I get an account with them and I could access all these products. Uh, so if you go to my homepage and press on that, you could access all these professional supplements and they ship uh, quickly. And I think over a minimum of a certain amount, it's free shipping. And uh, I have a 10% discount there. And then I think three or four times a year, they have on top of that an initial 10 or 15% when they run sales. So the discount is 10% uh, off of the manufacturer's suggested uh, retail price. All right, commercial's over. Uh, <laughs> no, that's that's fantastic. And glutathione, is that like in NAC? Uh, yes and no. So the glutathione is made up of three amino acids in the body. Uh, cysteine is one of them. Glycine is another. And I guess, is it glutamine maybe is, is the first one. Uh, in any event, NAC gives you cysteine. A lot of people are deficient in that sulfur containing amino acid cysteine. And then the body will use the cysteine to produce more glutathione naturally. So the NAC okay. helps you make glutathione. And the NAC okay. has its own good properties too. Yeah. Um, uh, interesting that they try to, you know, block sales of NAC and glutathione in the past two or three years, just as a side note, uh, because it's so helpful. Um, and NAC, yeah, take they, they use NAC in emergency rooms. Uh, they use it for Tylenol overdose uh, because it, it protects the liver from the Tylenol and you could reverse acute poisoning of Tylenol with it. Uh, so you can overdose from Tylenol too. I, I knew you could from, um, oh, what's that other one that everybody takes that raises your blood pressure? Oh, um, the not steroidals like Advil, Motrin, Medicaid, yeah. Naproxen. So those are yeah. toxic to the kidneys, a little bit to the liver. And then of course they could cause a gastrointestinal bleed. They're toxic to the stomach. Tylenol is mainly liver toxic, an overdose, but uh, so there is some evidence that it may also increase the risk of kidney cancer, by the way. Um, but in any event, um, yes, you can overdose on Tylenol. They shouldn't really take more than 2000 milligrams per day on a regular basis. Uh, if it's just sporadically, um, you could probably take up to 4,000 milligrams in a 24 hour period, something like that. But on a regular basis, no more than two grams or 2000 milligrams a day. So 
you can get all these supplements from my webs uh, through that full script. Um, some of these I get from different companies, but you could get a good liposomal glutathione from them. This one's from a pharmacy. Unfortunately, the Pecana remedies, you have to buy directly from them or through my office, and you have to be a healthcare practitioner to get an account. I don't know if I could set up patient accounts, but I could do direct drop ship uh, to patients. And these are the combination herbal, they're liquids, herbal homeopathics to stimulate the detox organs. So these work herbally and energetically, whereas the nutrients work more biochemically. Uh, and this patient showed for these procedures, an intravenous detox to get the toxins out of the body. This is his or hers particular uh, formula. Now, all of these remedies are homeopathic, so import from Germany. So when most alternative doctors say they're detoxing, they're usually using vitamin C or glutathione or ozone, sometimes hydrogen peroxide. Uh, when we say detox, we're mainly using these homeopathic remedies, but we also test the person if vitamin C would be useful, and this person showed for it. Uh, Beco is a B-complex vitamin. And the rest of these are vials that have five to 10 different homeopathic remedies for common purpose. And we import them from Germany for IV use. So that's liver, kidneys, lymph, uh, et cetera, brain, immune system, pancreas, circulation. So they got a detox, ultraviolet blood irradiation, which uh, you can see a description on my website, an intramuscular homeopathic from Germany for viruses. They had normal therapy, which is another story I won't get into. And auto blood is very important. Auto blood is how we treat autoimmunity. We take the blood out of your vein in your arm and we put it in the gluteal muscle in, in your backside. And that lowers the autoimmunity. And, um, and sometimes I suggest this to people and they can't find someone to do it. And, and Tamara, if you want to share, you, you came up with a resolution of that, didn't you? <laughs> That issue. Oh, energetic auto blood. Yes, energetic auto blood. Yes. Yeah, and you know what? It works. <laughs> yeah. So does the energetic IVs. But to have the list of this, because I've done energetic IVs on myself and I feel better. Mm -hmm. I've done auto blood on myself. Um, I've also gone and had auto blood done when I was um, healing from coronavirus, and I definitely noticed a huge difference mm. uh, with that. It, it definitely helped my body heal. So. Um, yeah. And then I, I started doing it and I said, wait a minute, if I can go to the doctor and get an IV for this or auto blood, then can't I do it energetically? And, um, and I could, <laughs> yeah. and, and she could, because I measured her before and after and the autoimmunity went down. So, <laughs> oh yeah, yes. that's right. Yeah. I forgot yeah. about that. Right. Yeah. Cause you tested me in some yeah. areas I was really high. And I said, okay, let me work on myself. And I did. And then we come back and he tested me again. And my, go ahead, tell him. <laughs> yeah, sure. The numbers came down. I, yeah. and that's right. Within, I forgot all about energetic IVs. Even before, uh, honestly, sacred activations, uh, you know, I knew that you could, you know, people would ask, you know, their guides or whatever to, you know, whoever they're working with to <clears throat> give them an energetic vitamin C infusion or something like that. So you don't always have to be a practitioner, but it's much, much better to be. Um, and then I have a typed up version of this. Uh, basically what I just showed you, uh, obviously that's for the patient to see with the supplements, which is a lot more clear and easy to read. ATP fuel is for, um, it's very good for energy. They don't sell that at full script because this company only won't work with any vendors only direct, but it has multiple different pathways it, it uh, addresses for energy production in the body. And this is the typed up uh, uh, back of the uh, treatment program. Um, and uh, lipids uh, are not, they are fats, but when I say lipids, and that's on my website, it's the Patricia Kane phosphatidylcholine protocol what <clears throat> pretty much all of our cell membranes and the brain tissue is 60% fat. And this fat you infuse intravenously helps the cell membranes regenerate and also helps some brain tissue. So when the cell membranes are healthier, uh, toxins get out more easily, nutrients get in better, and cell-to-cell -cell communication is enhanced. Yes. 
Yeah. Wait a minute. I'm always trying to get rid of fat on my body. And then right. now you're going to inject it into my body. I'm a little confused. <laughs> what do you mean by this? <laughs> well, it's not, um, I do have a, um, it does discourage, I think I have a description of this on my website. I do have brochures I send to people after I have their session, uh, after I have their follow-up, I send them literature on any of these things I have literature on. Some of it is just stuff I typed up. So a lipid basically is a, the definition of a lipid is a fat that's liquid at room temperature. That's what we call a lipid. Uh, so this isn't cholesterol or triglycerides we're injecting. It's specifically phosphatidylcholine. And we import it from uh, Switzerland, from the Paracelsus Clinic. They sell it. Um, it's And some uh, compounding pharmacies in the States will make it, but uh, we prefer from Switzerland. Uh, so it's phosphatidylcholine. And that's the, specifically, I believe, almost 80% of the fats in the cell membranes are made up of phosphatidylcholine. Uh, and there's also phosphatidylserine, especially in the brain. So that's the lipid we're injecting. And it's useful for any neurological illness, you know, dementia, Parkinson's, uh, neuropathy, et cetera. And it's also some practitioners use it as an anti-aging treatment. Uh, it's kind of like a feel-good treatment. Uh, some of these treatments you don't really feel too much from. You may get a detox reaction and feel worse for half a day or a day. Uh, some of them, like if you just do major ozone or lipids, you could feel better right away. Uh, so some people with lipids, they get a little bit more physical and mental energy and mental clarity uh, in the short run right after each treatment. Okay. Um, yeah, I see low sugar, no fish. Now I have a question about fish. What about like wild caught salmon? Well, this, still a this is specific to this person. Oh, okay. So, All so right. this person showed um, this person showed allergy to food, fish, and wheat. So you know okay. this is just for this particular patient. Uh, okay. But yes, a Got wild caught salmon is 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 much better than um, farmed. Um, right. The problem with the farmed is what they're feeding them. Uh, what they're feeding yeah. them has heavy metals, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, yeah. Salmon is a big fish. The bigger fish have more heavy metals, but it has so many other benefits. A lot of us feel the benefits outweigh the risks. Um, I just read something interesting on farm salmon. I thought it just had heavy metals. What they found is they analyzed uh, people who I think who were eating it or the fish itself. And the fat profile is different than the wild salmon. Uh, the, the, the farmed has more of the inflammatory fats. And the whole reason of eating the fish for their fats is to get the anti-inflammatory fats. Uh, right. So I wouldn't say the farm has more of the inflammatory, but they don't have as as good of a ratio as as the uh, wild caught. Wow. Yeah. Ivermectin. Yeah. Well, we can maybe go into that a little bit after. We have to take a break. Sure. Um, we're running late on the break. I want to keep going uh, every minute I can with you on this because um, this is just so fantastic. And if you guys have any questions. Go ahead and raise your, your hand and you can talk to Dr. David. And we do have somebody amazing on the call that has worked with them. If she wants to raise her hand and share, she's welcome to, um, but not mandatory. Um, so you guys, let's take a two minute break and we'll come right back. Ohm Times TV. Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself. Invest in your brand and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Ohm Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Ohm Times magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times. Open yourself to the possibilities. Do you want to go deeper into sacred activations, which is a subconscious meta-programming process? 
Tamara Oviat is inviting you to visit her website at tamaraoviat.com to sign up and get lifetime access to free seven activations that you can listen to anytime you want or as often as you need. If you like what Tamara does and like to incorporate sacred activations into your life, she also offers live webinars, master classes, and practitioners training to further support your healing, manifestations, and expansion. There are hundreds of activations on her website that address different aspects of your life, money, health, relationships, intuitive abilities, and more. Head over to her website at tamaraoviat.com and experience the magic of sacred activations. Thank you for listening. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk a mile in my shoes Well, before you abuse, criticize and accuse Walk a mile in my shoes Hi, everybody. Welcome back with Dr. David. I, I seriously wish we had at least two hours for this phone call today. Um, we have Janine in, um, and Janine is a client of mine, and I sent her to Dr. David to to work with him because she had some things to go over. So um, Janine, you can go ahead. I guess we need to unmute you, ask to unmute. There you go. Hi, Dr. Manganero. <laughs> How are you? I um, am in such better shape than when you saw me last. Um, and I thank Tamara for um, introducing us. I had a colon cancer and um, um, I was in pretty bad shape. Um, I have since had a surgery and, um, I'm recovered now I'm going on nine weeks and I feel absolutely different and whole in ways I can't even describe, but I've also, you know, done extensive sacred activations during this process. So I went basically from having the tumor be about six centimeters to, um, and inflamed lymph nodes, um, to, uh, when I, finally agreed to go ahead and have this tumor taken out to um, my colon being removed, which made me very sad. But the, the lymph nodes surrounding about 57 that they took were all clear. So I had no further need for treatment. What I am now, um, and I um, will be contacting you so we can further now um, down the road, but um, first, I wanted to thank you for everything you explained to me with my labs. There was no doctor that explained it to me better, so I understood what I was up against. And um, But it strikes me now that um, as my body is healing and I have um, quite, a, quite um, a few less problems than I had before, my blood, if we had taken it prior to this to now, I'm a new body it seems. I'm a new body that's that's learning how to function. Is that a correct assumption? If So now that we is moving forward, getting my blood done with you, um, that would be true? Uh, yes, it would likely be different. And just, just to clarify, uh, we just had a preliminary conversation. I never tested your blood or made any recommendations. Uh, and, and everything you're explaining has to do with uh, the surgery and the sacred activations is, is that correct yes that's correct right. okay all right yeah. so um yes it would it, it would be different certain certain things may change certain things may not change uh your your toxicity level uh from the regular medical treatment alone would not be much different maybe a little worse but with the sacred activations your toxicity level could be lower uh it's possible uh that if I checked your blood before, I would have detected some atypical cells. I don't, I don't say we cure anything. I say we treat people. I don't even say we treat disease. We treat people and their systems to try to optimize them so they, they come to homeostasis or, re, or reach wellness. But if I had seen atypical cells before, it's possible I would not see them now. So atypical cells in, in the work I do would be related to cancer cells. So they may be completely gone, which which is obviously what you want. Uh, some people are not completely gone. Yeah. Uh, 
Probably, I, I don't know if, if much else would have changed, you know, offhand. Um, obviously, you, you feel a lot better. So, uh, I, yeah, it's I, I, and I don't want to make the rest of this call about me, but I, 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 um, I'm very excited about doing the energetic work because that was a huge part of my healing. Um, and I do believe that that is why I, I had such a powerful outcome. Um, and moving forward, I, I am uh, wanting to make sure that there is no recurrence and that I stay in that joyful state. I stay in that state of gratitude. I stay in the state of, of, um, of um, just being in complete health and knowing that that's absolutely possible, keeping my thoughts clear as well as my body strong. So um, I thank you for you know being here today. It's really been very inspiring. I had no idea we could do so much energetic work uh, for the physical body, um, as you've described today, on blood. And so I'm just super psyched about that. So, so you brought up something that that just reminded me. Uh, we discussed before that when I'm doing the blood test, you know, we get the results then. Uh, I can't really go in the future, but sometimes I go in the past. Sometimes I measure something on the person, which is a new measurement that I'm doing. And I say, oh, I didn't, or I, I didn't check it initially because it wasn't important. But then I look at the date of their other blood. You could choose any date and I could ask in the past, well, what was their autoimmunity on this date or their toxicity on that date? And of course, those are indirect readings, but it's really uh, nice that you can, uh, because there really is no time or, or space. So, so you can just... Uh, Pick what date you want to test. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Janine, for sharing. So happy you're you're well and you're here with us. Thank you. Yay. You're a dear. Thank you. Uh, you're welcome. There's Go questions ahead, in the chat. Do you want me to look at those? Sure. Absolutely. All right. So as someone had asked previously, do I use any, they mentioned some uh, machines for testing. I, I don't. So the energetic testing I do, there's a lot of uh, different uh, devices that do similar things. Uh, I'm not, I was trained on one of them, one of the original ones, the Vega, which is an EAV, electroacupuncture, according to VOL, V-O-L-L, -L, and a Vega device. Uh, the, the newer ones, not only and quote unquote diagnose, let's say get findings, but they can also treat. Uh, those would be something like the Healy device is a more well-known one. Uh, more professional models would be Asira, Avatar. Um, this, there's a whole, a whole bunch of them. Um, I've seen some of these readings from patients and they feel they also get the dormant findings. And I just feel it's a lot of too much information and, and a lot of the information is not a priority, although some of them try to list and priority what to do first or next. Um, but yes, I'm, I'm familiar with those machines. Um, someone else asked for uh, high blood pressure. Uh, so, so there's many different types of magnesium. So just to give a general answer to that, uh, magnesium taurate, T-A-U-R-A-T-E. -E. Magnesium taurate is a specific magnesium that's for the heart and high blood pressure. Oh, Noromag is magnesium threonate. It's a magnesium connected to an amino acid threonine, which helps it enter the brain better. So it's good for memory and headaches. Um, and magnesium glycinate and citrate are good overall general magnesiums. Magnesium malate, M-A-L-A-T-E. <laughs> magnesium malate is very good for the muscles. Uh, a lot of people with fibromyalgia may pick that one. So most adults are deficient in magnesium, zinc, and vitamin D, and a handful of other things. But as, as a generalization, most adults are deficient in those three things. So for <laughs> blood pressure magnesium, <laughs> and, uh, and also for high blood pressure, uh, except uh, unless you're very young, uh, as we age, our bodies make less nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is something the blood vessels make and the bacteria in our mouth make that help dilate or open up the blood vessels. So you can actually go to full script or even Amazon and get nitric oxide saliva test strips to see if you're deficient. And then there is are different supplements that help replenish our nitric oxide. Uh, so it sounds like... Um, uh, snake oil, because they say, you know, when you replenish the nitric oxide, you can help blood pressure, memory, sexual dysfunction, all these different things. But basically, it's because the underlying mechanism 
in some people for some of those things is poor circulation. So it increases circulation by dilating or opening up the blood vessels. It will not clear a fixed blockage like cholesterol or other type of plaque, but it helps the blood vessels dilate and it will help lower blood pressure. So you can measure that and supplement it with uh, Neo 40 or L-arginine powder or citrulline. And there's a whole bunch of different supplements and some have combos in it. Uh, I'm currently taking L-arginine berry flavored powder in my uh, protein drink because it's, it's cheap and it has a lot of arginine and some citrulline in it and it works fairly well. And then after you supplement, you can retest to make sure you're taking enough of the right supplement. Interestingly, uh, you know, they relate a lot of bacteria to heart problems. So you can have infections in your mouth and, and get heart issues from it. That's been almost definitively shown, but you don't want to sterilize your mouth. That's what a lot of people were doing. So just like you have a microbiome in your gut, uh, which is a big part of our immune system and also our emotional system, because the microbiome, they call it the gut brain axis, uh, makes a lot of neurotransmitters that affect our mood. Uh, but the microbiome is 70% of our immune system. We actually have a normal microbiome in the mouth and even in the sinuses I've, I've seen recently. So in the mouth, if you sterilize the mouth, you could be killing the bacteria you need to convert some food products to nitric oxide to help your blood pressure and circulation. So I should not be brushing my teeth with coconut oil, baking soda. No, that's fine. You shouldn't be taking like a, a sterilization mouthwash uh, that okay. kills all the bacteria and using it every day. You shouldn't be doing that unless, you know, you have periodontal disease and it's recommended by a practitioner for a period of time. Okay. Got it. Cause it's like, okay. wait a minute. Cause I switched over to baking soda and coconut oil and sometimes um, peroxide. Um, yeah, that's fine. I, I think yeah. that's fine. They okay. even have lozenges. Uh, I don't know how I haven't looked into them fully yet. They have, uh, just like you take probiotics orally for your intestines, they have oral probiotics that are lozenges you dissolve in your mouth to, to replenish the good bacteria. They have probiotics now specifically for immune system, for your mood, for your heart health, because they found different strains are good for different things. And the way they discovered this is now they do DNA testing on, on, on the stool and they can look for infections that way, which is better than the microscope. Uh, and the DNA testing, they could delineate your whole microbiome and then it compare you to hundreds or thousands of other people, their microbiomes and what diseases they have. And they could tell you with your microbiome profile uh, if you're at increased risk of getting certain diseases. Now, the cause and effect has not been proven. It's more of an observation. You know, a lot of people with Parkinson's may have too much of this bacteria or not enough of this one, for instance. So everybody with certain diseases seem to have different microbiome profiles. And that's why they even do uh, fecal transplants. They've done them initially for intestinal infections, but now they find fecal transplants can be used to treat autism, for instance. And you could try Googling fecal transplant and autism. Or, transplanting what for autism? Because I have some autistic. Transplant feet that actually take the feces from a healthy person and either rectally implant it in you. Some places actually make some type of oral uh, product, but most people aren't, you know, very willing to take that. Uh, it's from it's from the, <laughs> from the healthy person. It's processed somehow, uh, and yeah. they do usually do it rectal rectal implants, or you can take it orally or both. Wow. Yeah. So you could have like a mother donate her feces to her son and they can inject it back into his rectum and it will help his autism. How many times do they have to do that? Uh, I don't I don't know if it has to be mother to son or they just take it from healthy people who donate. Uh, okay. And and I didn't go too much in depth in reading about the studies with autism. So I, I think it's really as long as you're maintaining a good, healthy microbiome, you only have to do it once, maybe twice uh, to see an effect. And I'm sure it does not always work, obviously, or else it would be a uh, panacea. I think someone's Googling that now. <laughs> <laughs> Probably Leonard. Somebody on Zoom here Googling. Anyway, did you want to get to more uh, other questions? 
Um, yeah, go ahead. We only have a couple more minutes. I really want to do this again. And now I'm thinking I really want to do a weekend class with you with my medical intuitive practitioners. If you're interested, we can talk about that because okay. we could probably fill a weekend with this of of really helping people that are practitioners, energetic practitioners, helping people to really help them understand this. I mean, this is this is so amazing. Um, my head is just going off and it's like, I want to keep talking to you and I know we can't. <laughs> so um, let, let's talk about that if that's something you're interested in doing. Okay, for, for, for part of a week. And, and then I could even go into more depth in the treatments we give uh, for particular findings. And then, you know, you could consider coming up with energetic ways to do those specific treatments. Well, yeah. And then also, yeah, with you and you guys, I mean, go ahead and do one more question because um, we're almost out of time here. Well, I was just looking at the chat. I don't know if anybody has a hand up. Well, I don't see any hands up, but I, I somebody wanted to confirm the three different types of magnesium. I have two of them here. Well, there's more, there's more than three. There's probably... God knows how many, maybe 10 to 12 different types. Uh, there's a particular company that combines them all, but you may not get enough of any individual one. Magnesium malate, M-A-L-A-T-E. Um, I should just put it in the chat. Malate is good for the muscles. A lot of people with uh, fibromyalgia use magnesium malate. And then there's glycinate, which is just well-absorbed, and citrate, well-absorbed, and Rionate, I'm typing this in, which is good for the brain, and taurate, which is good for the heart and high blood pressure. Um, uh, and then, you know, these are the more expensive magnesiums because they're, they're well absorbed for a specific purpose. But if your main issue is actually constipation, magnesium, uh, magnesium oxide, which is the cheapest form, it's cheap because it's not well absorbed, but it's good for constipation. <laughs> because you don't want it well absorbed, or magnesium peroxide is one called that, which is oxycleanse. I really like that one. That's on the full script uh, from my website. If you go to full script, it's called oxycleanse. That's really good for constipation. It, uh, it's a peroxide, two oxygen molecule. That's absolutely incredible. Mm -hmm. um, Will you come back? <laughs> oh, sure. I, I could give a, if you want on one of these, I could give a body code demo, which you don't need a doctor for. You know, you could have any body code practitioner do that. But okay. I, I could explain that because it's very medically based. It's very, just very interesting to do a screen share and see um, see what's going on with the, the body code. I'll just uh, like have the, if it comes up to, uh, Huh. There it is, something like that, which is the uh, it disappeared, huh? Yeah. All right. Anyway, okay. I could come back for one of these or something else. I would love to have you back. I think you're absolutely amazing. Um, you guys, his website is posted. He will work on Skype. You can send him blood tests. He will give you the blood test you need. Oh, somebody here has a body code. Yeah. Uh, book that's brand new and and i could i could test remotely uh you know live with you but i, I can't do as much that way and, and it's not as accurate of course but i can do that. yeah yeah he, he's absolutely amazing uh thank you so much um dr david for being here and everybody for showing up we're out of time i am not going to be able to run activations today um we can't go over our time so Thank you so much for being here. Um, I think we have a guest um, host next week and it's one of my teachers and she'll be running all kinds of activations. So make sure you come back next week to receive activations. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Dr. David. Um, let's awesome. talk soon. I definitely wanna do a class with you. Okay. okay. All, right. all right, perfect. Thank all you right. everybody. Have an amazing day. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.